Hey, how's it going? It's Lee Halliday, and today we are going to be talking about React Virtualized. React Virtualized is a package you can use anytime you're trying to render a ton of data for your user without slowing your app down, without facing the performance hits that may come with trying to show so much data at once. This video is brought to you by LogRocket, a front-end monitoring solution, which we will talk a little bit about later when we get into debugging. And uh, it's based on an article written by Esteban Herrera, which you can find on the LogRocket blog. So to get started, I've got a Create React app that's doing nothing but spitting out the word app right now. And we're basically going to start by creating a big list of, uh, in this case, fake data. And we'll see how the performance takes a hit. And then we'll use React Virtualize to help speed that up. So the first thing I want to do is to create some fake data. So we'll create some state called uh, people and set people. And we'll set that to use state to an empty array at the beginning. Then we will use use effect hook to populate, uh, let's say just a hundred people at the beginning and we'll gradually increase it to show how uh, performance takes a hit. So I'll use empty brackets here on the use effect hook, meaning I only want it to run once after the initial render. And what we'll do is we'll call set people and we'll pass in a hundred people. So what I'm going to do is a little trick to generate array records. I'm going to start with an array and I'm going to spread in array with a hundred records, its keys. And once we have that, it basically gives us a hundred records of data. And what we can do is then map those where we've got uh, the key and we will be returning a person for each one. So I'm going to put my, uh, my function parentheses and I will return an object where the ID will just be the key. And then we've got a name. So I'm gonna be using faker to generate some fake data. So we'll pop in um, faker.name.firstName and then a space, and then faker.name.lastName. And why don't we create a fake bio for these fake people? Lots of fakeness going around. So faker will do Laura Mipsum, and they've got how many lines you can choose of Laura Mipsum. And we want it to be a variable length because that will help me show something with React Virtualize later on. So we'll use math.random, and we'll just multiply it by 100. Uh, math.random gives you a number between zero and one. So we'll have between zero lines of lorem ipsum up to a possible hundred lines of lorem ipsum for a massive bio. So if we save that, why don't we go into our app and let's just render out these people. Um, I'll put them in a, in a list for now. So we've got uh, people.map and we'll map each person and we'll map them to a list item where the uh, key will be person.id and inside the list item, we will do person.name like that. Okay, so if I come back, I have my 100 fake people looking great. So I'm gonna open up the component uh, React Dev Tools and what we're, actually no, Profiler. And we're going to take a look at how long it takes to render this list of people. Now, right now it's only rendering once, so I wanna just add in a little bit of code to basically trick React into rendering every one second. So to do that, we'll create some new state called the time, and we will initialize that to a new date. And we want this time to update itself every second. So what I'm going to do is another use effect. So I got my effect function, to run once on initialize, and we'll be using a set interval to have it run repeatedly. So we'll put the interval into a variable and we'll say set interval. Here's the function to run. Here's how often, thousand milliseconds. And what we will do every time this runs is call set time, creating a new date. And just a tip with use effect, when your component unmounts, you want to stop the interval from running. So what you can do is return a function that runs during cleanup and we can call clear interval using this uh, interval that I put into a variable. That was why I put it there. Cool. And just to see that it's actually 
uh, repeatedly rendering. Why don't we show our time? And we'll do a two ISO string. So we come back, there we go. We've got the time up here. It's rendering every second. So now we can come into the profiler and we'll start profiling. We'll just let it run for a couple seconds. We'll stop that. And what we can see is that it took about four milliseconds, maybe three, to render 100 people. So not so bad. But what happens if we increase this to 1,000 people? So I'm going to start our profiler again, let it run for a couple seconds, and we can see now that it's already taking about uh, 20 milliseconds. Just a heads up that this video is brought to you by LogRocket, a front-end application monitoring solution. We've been talking about debugging locally, but what happens when you push this code live to production? You've got real users browsing your website, and you want to find out what sort of bugs they're encountering. I've installed LogRocket on my website, which is a Gatsby React application. And what you can do is you can actually play back the user's sessions to see what bugs they're encountering and to actually see the real user experience. You can see them sort of scrolling the page. You get access to the network requests to see how long different requests are taking. You can even see what's in sort of the browser console to see what errors are coming up. And you can even add um, different plugins to see your Redux and your MobX stores to see what they're doing. Check it out, it's really cool. In the top right hand corner of the screen, there's a link that will take you over to LogRocket where you can get a 14 day free trial. Now, as soon as you go over 30 milliseconds, I think that's when you start to see, um, the user will start to notice because around 30 milliseconds or so is sort of one frame when you're rendering. And so if we increase that to 10,000, have this uh, now takes a second to generate 10,000 fake people. We profile this for a couple seconds, pause it. Now you can see that it's taking almost 190 milliseconds to render that list of 10,000 people. Frankly, that's not so bad for rendering so many people, but um, at this point you've got basically two options. First option is, why are you rendering 10,000 items on a page? That's a lot. Maybe you could paginate them in a different way, um, only show a certain number of people at a time. Maybe they access it via search. There's a number of ways you could uh, cut down that high number of uh, items to render. But if you have to render 10,000 people, that's when it's gonna be great to use React Virtualized. It basically renders a portion of those at a time but the user, it looks like they're sort of scrolling through. We'll get into that in a sec, but what you'll see is you can now render 10,000 people in just a few milliseconds with React Virtualized. So let's close this now. Let's drop this back down to 1,000 just so my computer doesn't go too crazy trying to render all this stuff. And we're going to use React Virtualized. So I'm gonna comment out this UL. We're not gonna use that anymore and we will start to use React Virtualized, specifically the list. Um, they have a number of ways you can use React Virtualized. They have a grid, they have a table. We'll be using the list functionality. So we'll come down and we'll use the list. It's self-closing and we need to pass a number of props to it. So we need to pass width and you need to pass an actual integer. So that's your first sort of red flag like what about responsiveness? What about 100% width, 100 VH height? We'll get to that in a second, but for now, hard-coded. So height of 600, we need to tell it um, how high to render each row, how, uh, how many pixels each row should be in height. That's your second red flag that we will cover a little bit later on, but let's say 50 pixels for now. We need to tell it how many rows there will be. So we'll say, uh, Sorry, not round, people.length. And now finally, we can pass in the row renderer. And this is a function that's called for each row where it's our job to render that row. So let me just save this to get some formatting. Okay, so we receive a number of things to this row renderer and um, that's what we have to deal with now. So what we receive is a key, basically a unique item for each one. We receive the index, 
we receive, and that's the index of the person we're trying to render. We receive style and we receive a parent that we'll get to a little bit later. So let's see how we can use each of these things. The index helps us find the person we want from the people array. So we'll grab that person. Now we're just gonna render these out in, uh, in divs. The key is something we could use to make this unique for React. Now in our case, we could also use uh, person.id, but we'll just use key. You have to pass uh, style in for each one. Why don't I leave it off at the beginning just to see how it gets messed up. And uh, within here, we can do the same sort of just an H2 for now. Cool. So if we come here, it's, see how there's all, it's crazy stuff going on. The reason that's happening is because we have to pass in the style that um, React Virtualize gives us onto the element being rendered. So as soon as I do that, it now renders this list very nicely. And why don't we pop it back up to 10,000 people and let's see how long it's taking to render that. So I think it's already rendered the uh, 10,000. So why don't we come over to the profiler and we'll just start that for a few seconds. Stop it. Sweet. So now you can see that it's able to render 10,000 people in just 1.8 milliseconds, which is I think even faster than, um, than React was doing rendering 100 people at a time. So that's pretty great. And if I close this, you can see that it's performant. I'm able to just scroll th through this list of people. Here's the trick and what React Virtualized is actually doing. So if we look at the DOM, these divs here, sort of from here to here, these are our 10,000 people. And you can notice there's not 10,000. What it's doing is it's basically swapping out the divs as you scroll. So it's listening for you to scroll and it's updating the data and the position of that data in this, um, in this style on the div. If we were to pop this open, this is what we rendered. But that's why we had to pass the style attribute because, or the style prop, because without that, um, React Virtualize isn't able to control where it's able to show up. And the reason it adds that top property is so that as you're scrolling, you can see the scroller show up in the correct way. So that's all being controlled by the top. But it only really works if React Virtualize knows the height of each of your rows, which is a problem that we'll see in a, in a little bit. The first problem we're gonna solve though, before we even get there, is having to fix the height in pixels. So we did 600 and 600. Let's uh, fix that with a component that comes with React Virtualize called the Auto Sizer. So Auto Sizer is something you're going to wrap around your uh, list and a couple changes we have to make. We have to put it in a div because it's going to take the size of the div or the element that it lives in. So if we want it to be 100% width, 100 VH height, we need to specify that on the outer div. So we'll say width is 100%, height is 100 VH. And one more thing, you can't pass a component directly inside, you need to pass uh, a function that gets rendered. So what we'll do is the result of that function will be that we receive the width and the height uh, from the auto sizer that we can then pass on to our list. So basically it will monitor how many pixels width and height should have and um, it will render that accordingly. Hey, are you tired of recreating bugs in your React apps? If so, click on any of the links in the top right of this video to get a free trial of LogRocket. LogRocket is a React monitoring solution that helps you track Redux state, automatically surface JavaScript errors, and monitor slow network requests and component load times. Enjoy the rest of the video. So now I come back. Now I've got 100 uh, VH and 100% uh, width container, which is awesome. 
So the next thing we want to fix is having to specify our row height in pixels because you may not know how many pixels uh, high your row should be. For example, remember that bio I created that we haven't used yet? Let's add this into the P. So person.bio and you're about to see a disaster. Oh. So this is what happens with a 50 pixel hard-coded height. It's mayhem, it looks horrible. So we need to use um, a cell measurer. And that's basically code that React Virtualize will use to measure each row once so that it knows how many pixels high to render it as, rather than rendering it as a fixed 50 pixel height. So for that, there's two things we're going to use. The cell measurer, that's a component, and the cell measure cache to help make it more efficient. We'll start off with the cache. So we're going to create an instance of it and we're going to put it in a ref using the React use ref hook so that it only gets generated once and then that's the one that's used from then on. And uh, you use a ref when you basically want to keep track of something between renders, but you don't want it itself to cause re-renders. So what we'll do is we'll create a new um, measure or cache, cell measure or cache like that, and we'll pass in a couple options. We'll say fixed width is uh, true and default height, just help it out a little bit at the beginning. We could, we could say 100 pixels. So with our ref in place, what we can do is come down and use this cache. So what we need to do is come down to our list and add a couple things to it. The first thing we need to do is we need to, instead of using 50 pixels, we need to say cache. And because it's a ref, you say dot current to actually access that cache. And we can grab the row height from the cache rather than hard coding it. We're going to add something called deferred measurement cache. Um, and if we read the little uh, thing that pops up, if cell measure is used to measure the grid's children, this should be a pointer to its cell measure cache. So it basically helps it um, cache and measure cells efficiently. So this, all you need to do is point it to the cache.current. So as of now, it won't be working yet. What we need to do is come down and wrap the cell measure around the thing that we're rendering, the, the cell, like this. And we need to pass a number of props. So the first thing, because we're rendering a list, we need to move the key up to the sort of top level component that's being rendered. We need to give it access to the cache, so cache.current. We need to give it access to the parent that it's being rendered in. So this would be the list in our case, but we have access to the parent here, like that. And then we need to tell it the column index and the row index. So column index, because we're not doing a grid or a table or anything, ours is just zero, but our row index, we can just grab from here, like that. Cool. So basically the first time that it encounters um, a row to render, I'm not sure how they manage this, but somehow they're able to figure out how, how tall this thing should be. They're gonna cache that height, and then whenever they render that, they know how tall to make that, um, that row. So if we come back, now we're able to uh, see the full bio for each of our people, but their variable height. If we can find, so you can see this is a really short one. If we come down here, we have a really long one, just like that. And we're able to scroll through them all uh, performantly. And if we just, for the last time, open up our profiler, run this, let it run for a couple seconds and stop it. We can see that 0.8 milliseconds, it's still measuring things and uh, rendering things efficiently. So what we've done in the case here is we've gone from having some troubles, troubles rendering out 10,000 people just in straight up React to using React Virtualized to render it in a list efficiently and then we solve two common problems that appear or that 
that come about with React Virtualize, and that is having to hard code the width and the height because it uses this as it's calculating how tall to make each row and the entire container that it's in. We solved that with AutoSizer, and we also solved having to hard code the height of each of our rows using the, uh, what's it called again? The cell measurer cache along with the cell measurer component. So again, if you ever find yourself uh, struggling to render out huge number of rows efficiently, try React Virtualized. They have another sort of more lightweight um, package that you might want to try. I think it's called React Window that does a lot of what you commonly do with React Virtualized, but it's a little bit more efficient. Uh, so give that a try out. But if you uh, run into some things that it doesn't do and React Virtualized does, uh, you're fine using React Virtualized. It's used by 13,000 repositories, so it's a very popular package. But again, I want to reiterate, you may want to question, should I be rendering 10,000 rows onto the screen at once? Maybe pagination could be used or other, other ways of handling that. Hope you enjoyed this video. Hope you learned something. Take care. Bye.